Okay. This is going to be basically a disassembly scrap video. I have an HP printer here. Basically going to be taking down the bare metal, pulling any uh, any motors out, any circuit boards, things like that. What even is this thing? Oh, it's a Canon. Canon PC921. Dumped on the side of the road. So, uh, we're going to take this bad boy apart. Let's see. Let's start off. Hell, there's some fitment here. There's got to be some screws. A couple. The bottom's got tons of stuff to come out. Let's go ahead and get the bucket ready. Do this a little bit quicker. There we go, much better. This is therapy, if nothing else. Not like I'm gonna actually get any kind of good used parts out of it. But motors and light bulbs, whatever I find, we will take a look at. That's no good. There we go. A little bit too big there. Oh, it's full of stuff. piece of a bent jewelry screwdriver here. Try to get that crud out of there. At least enough to just pop the screw out, otherwise I'd have to drill it. I'm rushing is the problem. Oh. This is relaxing stuff. Just got no goal here, no premise to this video, just taking stuff apart. And I, I do uh, take the piles of stuff that I get from this and split it up into metal and plastic and uh, give all the metal stuff to the metal guy. We've got the number of a guy that comes by every once in a while and grabs all the stuff. This whole thing pretty much is plastic. I can get these containers out of here. There we go. And there we go. The metal. The rest of this is pretty much complete trash. As you're going to see, there is hardly anything that you can actually get out of these old printers. But there are a couple of, a couple good DC motors, quirky little DC motors that are useful. Uh, there's some, some different sensors, like the old, uh, old mice that use the optical uh, with the, the spotted wheel to basically track movement. Uh, this has a, a lot of those mechanisms in this. Got here. Cut 
quiet. fans in it, a bunch of caps. Very cool. I'll bet this sucker wasn't too cheap back in the day. That's a cool little fan. I bet that's 12 volts. Cool. So maybe we will get some parts out of this thing after all. <sighs> Go ahead and get all these disconnected. Get the circuit board out of here. Put that in the pile. There we go. I'm gonna pop those couple screws out of here after I get these last couple wires. There we go. Got one up here. And there should be one more. Maybe not. No, maybe not. Oh, there's a key here. Get on both sides of this key and try and squeeze it. Come on, baby. Those are pain in the rear end. There we go. I got one more here keeping me. I'm going to spin that just to make it a little easier to get to. Let's see. I just kind of wedge one side at a time with this flat head. Okay. And here comes the next. Good, be good enough. A lot of transistors and stuff on here. I wonder how high temp this stuff is. I wonder if I could get it off relatively easily with the heat gun. I bet I could. Very cool. Alright. Put this in the pile here. And we'll just keep moving on. Pulling stuff off as we find it. Looks like this fan's about ready. Go at least one side of it. Oh, these, uh, these tracks for the wires are keeping me. There we go. All right. What is it? A uh, 24 volt fan. That means there's a 24 volt power supply in here. Very cool. I will be pulling that sucker out. Put that in the pile. Just keep moving along. That really scared the hell out of me and that mechanism opened this whole thing up. It's like the whole printer itself is clamshell. Makes it super, super easy to work on, but I can see somebody getting some fingers caught. printer is going to come apart in half too at some point. There we go. Out of the way. Okay, looks like I'm at an impasse here. Let's do see a screw here. I don't know if that's going to help me. No, not too much. Okay. There must be a mechanism to get this thing. Uh, two halves apart here. 
What is this? When you transport the copier, reattach the screws to the left and right as shown in the operator's manual. A key here, somewhere. Maybe that just keeps it from opening. Oh, let's see here. I do see something there. It looks like there's a Phillips in here. A little cartridge. Cartridge area comes out. There we go. Uh, looks like it's some kind of service port. That does absolutely nothing. This whole top button assembly, I bet, comes out. So I've got some keeps here, if I can get them. Looks like this front assembly will come apart at once. There we go. There we go. There we go. We've got one wire here. What is this? Is this a power button or a button of some kind? There we go. Whole button assembly. Big sliders back here. Got tape wire out of here. And let's see if this this whole circuit board will just pop out of here. Got to keep there. Keep there. There we go. Oh, nice. A little seven segment display. It only does 188, but hey, what the hell? At least it's two digits, right? Cool. Some buttons. There's that nice slider we talked about. Not sure exactly what that does. If that's a variable, oh, we yeah, have VR301. I bet that's a variable resistor. Quite a few LEDs here. Buttons. Cool. In the pile. And this is completely trash. Keep moving here. Uh, let's see. Oh. At some point, looks like this top casement should come off. Let's see the hinge mechanism there. Anything I can get to. Ooh, it looks like there's a pretty big motor and a gearbox in there. Very cool. Okay, I think I'm just going to brute force it. Yep, there we go. Alright. Ooh, that's shooting shit everywhere. Well, it's open at least for now. I'll go ahead and play with that while I have it there. Try and get some of this metal out of the way, get springs and stuff off of this thing. Nothing moving yet there. Screw the ground chassis wire here, looks like. There we go. Make sure I'm still in the corner here. Yeah. Very good. Okay. The whole carriage mechanism. Wow. When printing quality is poorer, please adjust the printer toner concentration near the gear switch. Huh. I wonder how that adjustment works. Got some warm gears in there. I'll pull this apart later just to look at it. See this whole gear train mechanism here. I think I'm going to try and leave this assembled, um, pull that all off as one unit, and see what kind of gear reduction we get across the thing. Uh, let's see. This looks like it'll come up. 
paper feed. Crush. Bits out of here. There's the power supply. You know what, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and try and short this capacitor just in case. I doubt it's charged, but let's see. Yep. Dead zone. Cool. Don't have to worry about that killing me. Ah. So I'm gonna screw this side here. Looks like I've got some keeps here for this top shell. There we go. That side casement off. Very cool. Wow, I'm going to pull it around so you can see this. <sighs> no expense spared here. Wow. Wow, nice motor with the cooling fan on the back. That sucker feels like it's got quite a bit of torque. I would bet you money it's 24 volts. And I would bet you money it does indeed have quite a bit of torque. Got some nice little transformers on here. Uh, this don't touch. Obviously that might be a Wi-Fi or something like that. A little separate module. That's how the other printer I took apart was. Uh, let's see what's under here. Oh, cooling fin. I wonder if those are... MOSFETs, switchable MOSFETs, let's see, where can I go about getting this apart? I guess I'm going to just start unplugging stuff here, there we go, this says no touchy, I wonder why, I doubt it's anything high voltage, it has to just be interference, I would assume, there we go, there we go, there we go, Goes out of the way. This is cool. This is much, much more complex than the newer printer that I recently took apart. Looks like we have a, a is that a Cockroft multiplier right here? Oh, obviously it is high voltage. Wow, I wonder what they're using that high voltage for. Hmm, where does the power supply plug in? Back here? Somewhere? Oh, right here in the back. Okay, right here in this corner where we plug our power into. So obviously all the rectifying and power supply switching is right here in this section. And then over here we have all kinds of different things going on. Well, if nothing else, this is a lot of parts I can take apart. Very, very good. Let's see here. Get that one unplugged. There we go. Open that up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Got, got one more A different kind of mechanism here. There we go. Very good. Got that undone. This circuit more circuit board might be ready to come out of here. One more. Boy line there. Go ahead and try and get these out. See if this circuit board will indeed come apart. I bet it will. We got a lot of keeps in there too that we'll have to make sure to activate while we're going through and trying not to break the board. That's cool. I didn't expect there to be high voltage. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. I don't think the other printer had high voltage of any kind. More back here. And a lot of times these old controller boards can be worth some money. A lot of times you can, if you look up part numbers off of this thing on eBay, so 
a lot of times you'll find that people are selling them quite readily and they're a lot of times not cheap so you want to look at that you might have some money in front of you especially because this is older and the board looks so clean who knows somebody doing some kind of retro movie wants you know this printer in there because it looks authentic I must be missing a screw or something. Ah. Like I said, there's a lot of these peeps. Oh, we got one more screw down here, it looks like. Going through this heat sink. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh. oh, there we go. One of those one of those bad ones that we had to deal with earlier. Absolutely missing something somewhere. I did miss a plug. I know that. There we go. Come plug from the other side. Helps. That has to be it. That one down there. There we go. Stupid. I hate these. I hate these very much. There we go. At least I know that's not what's keeping me now. There we go, that was what was keeping me. All right. Very nice. Good looking control board. Very cool, I will go ahead and set this off to the side very carefully. Like I said, I'm gonna to wanna to look that up and see if it's worth any money. Trash. Black keeper out of here. There we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's actually. Yeah, that's totally trash. There's nothing of use there at all. I'll go ahead and pull the metal and wire off of here just because it's easy. And trash go. Now it looks like this motor assembly is ready to come off. There we go. Now let's see if it's 
slides on off. It's actually on the plate. I should have just taken them out of the plate and left them in there. I think I'm going to do that. There we go. Ruin that screw. Oh well, I'll just go ahead and put that and make sure that goes in the trash and not in my bucket. I don't want to try and use it on something else. There we go. And pop goes the weasel. Looks like we have a there is why it failed. Right there is why this printer was thrown on the side of the road. One broken belt. And that belt is much more than broken. Get up here and try and show you this. This is entirely wrapped around the shaft there, that worm gear at least six or seven revolutions and it is just I mean it's like stringy oil at this point it's not even actually malleable that's bad so the belt fell got stuck in the gear works and it got thrown on the side of the road from there now I have this motor I have no idea what voltage it is but the cool thing is look at how much gear reduction we have I spin at maybe maybe a couple hundred RPMs with my finger and I'm getting just a fraction of a ro rotation out of that end gear there. So this is big time gear reduction. Very very cool. That's calculable by the way. All those different gear mechanisms. You can calculate how much torque one pound of this will put onto this. I would imagine it's several dozen if not maybe near a hundred times as much torque as the motor actually puts out. Very good. I'll put that off to the side. Just make sure this belt, cursed belt, goes in the trash can. Start taking some more metal off of here. I keep all these screws too. I basically just fill up a coffee can. And when the coffee can gets full, I basically either toss it in the trash can or uh, add them into a bigger bucket full of random nuts and bolts and stuff. Good. Oh, there was that second gearbox mechanism. It looks like it's mostly one-to-one -one here. Very nice. I bet I can get that off in one, one motion here. goes and there goes the drill Sorry about that. Now I do have a magnet on a pole around here somewhere that comes in very very handy uh, when the stuff starts to fly all over the place This is way more trouble than it's worth, but I recognized that long time ago. There we go. There we go. Aha! Uh -huh. And it's absolutely useless. <laughs> What's kind of cool is this this mechanism here will disengage this. That's kind of cool. That's totally trash. All the gears and everything are trash. Alright, go ahead and throw those slugs with the metal I have. Gears, trashy trashy. Thank you. 
last little piece of plastic. More metal. More metal. All right. All right. Let's see what else we can do here. Uh, looks like these will cry out. These keeps. Maybe I can get this top fitting case off. No, it doesn't look like it. There are keeps in here though. Okay. Looks like it's for getting that undone. There we go. Top casement. Trashy, trashy. Trashy, trashy. And trying to get these wires out of these tracks here. There we go. One, two. Very good. That was actually unplugged. I didn't need to do that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we're making some moves here. Got some more screws. There we go. All right. My magnet here. Magnetic screwdriver. Pull the screws out of the way. Nothing yet. Ah, let's see. There we go, getting some movement. Trashy. screws out that I can at least see for right now. There we go. There we go. Okay. This looks like another motor. Um, it does go through that zip tie, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this zip tie just so I can keep the harness with it. There we go. Alrighty, Let's see if I can get this undone. on the back side of it. I'm going to have to get back there. I'll we'll wait a second on that. Uh, let's see if I can get in here. Ooh, I'd probably get the glass out right now. That'd be good. 
keep myself from dropping that all over the place. That would make a mess. Get this top brace out of here. Chassis grounding. Wiring harness is pretty much trash. Alright. Okay. Looks like I got that whole top part loose. I keep working down the way here. There we go. Wow, look at all this pulley mechanism down here. Wow, look at that. I can actually activate it. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. All of this pulley mechanism stuff going back and forth to control this whole thing. Pretty cool. More metal. Wiring harness again, it's pretty much trash. More trash plastic. And this is definitely some kind of limit switch. That's obviously what activates it right there. I'm not sure if this is optical or magnetic. I'm not sure. Go ahead and throw it off to the side for now. all the track mechanism there's the reflector I'm not sure where the actual light is though oh there it is oh yeah that must be what the high voltage is for ballast for that light I'd have to assume that's what it is Okay, let's go ahead and get these screws out of here, as many as I can. What did I break? What did I break? Reflector back here. Just my hand's pressure on that. I have to make sure that goes in the trash can. Don't cut the crap out of myself for that. Alright, got one more screw here. Not quite moving yet. Let me get these wires out of the way though. Looks like this is actually heat insulation. Alright. Looks like there's a bunch more screws down here. There we go. A few more down here, obviously. Still haven't broke that light bulb. Miracle. Got another screw here. Another screw here. Yeah, this thing has tons of screws. There's a reflector. Yeah, it's actually metal. I'm not sure what this is, some kind of jumper, maybe a fuse, a fuse for that light bulb, fuse or diode or something, let's see, I'm going to open that up, let's see, 
if I can figure out what exactly that is. That looks like a fuse. 125 volt, 15 amp fuse. Very cool. Maybe it's a thermistor or something. I don't know. I'm going to keep that. Very good. Set that off to the side so I don't lose it in the pile. Alright, what else we got here? Don't need any money. A lot of things falling apart here. Oh, here we go. I got a spring loaded mechanism that actually just kind of divots on the end of the bulb. And you spring that, the bulb comes right out. So it's obviously replaceable to some extent. Very good. I have no idea how many volts it how many volts it takes to get that thing going. Looks like it might actually be broken. At least it sounds like it is, but that might just be the filament going throughout the whole thing. Very cool. I'll keep that keep that separate. Alright. Getting back in here. More metal pieces. I don't see much more, but I know there's screws in here holding something together. There we go. There's another screw. Actually, that's about all the metal that was on here. I think I'm going to cut my losses on this piece. Chuck that whole thing in the trash can. Good. Go ahead and get this bottom plate off. Obviously, this is hiding something. Oh wow. Oh no, that's just the bobbin. So obviously I sprung that. I doubt that was actually sprung before. If it was sprung, then that was another reason it failed. Or maybe that happened when the when the uh, belt failed. Oh. And there's the motor I was trying to get out. I don't see voltage or anything. This looks like it might be a stepper. That looks like it might be a stepper. I'll play with that. Very cool. Set that in the pile there. Okay, what else do we have here that's worth taking? This stuff is actually pretty strong, but I just don't think I could think of any any kind of use for it at all. I'd love to keep it. It's like it's almost like little elevator wire. Go ahead and actually I'll put that with the metal. Since it is metal. Like we got a big worm gear here. Something. Yeah, except. What's this? What is this? What is this? Looks, looks like it might be the uh, optical lens. Keeps 
coming apart, but I'm not making much much headway at this point. Another reflector. Trashy, trashy. What is this? That looks like it's just a lens, nothing else. Well, it certainly magnifies. If I can show you here. Very cool. Maybe I could pull that lens out and just use it for magnification, if nothing else. Yep, there's a couple screws here. This whole lensing mechanism should pop right out. Aha! Ta-da! I'll clean that up. Just use it as a little magnifier. That's that's cool. That's cool. Maybe it'll work as a fire starter. Who knows? We'll try it. Middle. A lot of screws down here. So you get most of them in the in the bucket. All right, that's good enough. All these pieces of glass and mirror and stuff like that. It's all trash. There we go. I'm not sure how much else we got here. I see no circuitry. Uh, you see a little bit of circuitry down there, but I'm not sure what that would be for. Our motor was going right there. We had another motor. What is this? Is it some kind of little limit switch or actuator? It's like a, an electronic solenoid down in there. I doubt you can see it from there, but trust me, it's there. I need more screws to take apart. I just don't see any way to get into this thing any further. Um, screw here. I doubt that's going to get me anywhere. <sighs> Nothing. I got some more circuitry back there. What do I have? What do I have? Uh, more screws. Oh, I see some more screws here too. I like this because it's a I have as much of an idea on how to take this thing apart as you guys do. So it's, it seems impossible, and then you just keep working at it, and eventually you pop it open, and you're finding parts that you're interested in keeping. Come on, give me some more screws. A little track mechanism there. That's a paper feed. No doubt about it. I don't want to mess up that solenoid if that is indeed what that is. Let's see here. See it. Uh, what is this? It's like another 
actuator or limit switch or something of some kind. Oh, that looks like a contact. Look at that. How cool is that? That is a little tiny. Get up here and show you. This is a little tiny electronic contact. I bet that's 24 volt. That will be fun to play with. Make like an audible flip flop for a clock or something. Very cool. I'm glad I did this. Alright, let's keep it in here. See what we can't see. There's another actuator back here too. Four on here, obviously, unless it pops in one end and screws in the other end. Yep, sure does. Oh, that's lucky. Getting kind of out of shot here, but I'm just going after this other, this other optical or uh, magnetic limit switch here. That sucker is actually molded into the case, so I'm going to leave that in the trash. Now I can get to these screws, and it looks like there's another, another actuator down there. underneath here on this shaft are actually what's holding me up. I'm just going to keep taking out screws that I can see. Trashy, trashy. Let's see here. More screws. Like M3 self tappers, you can fill your entire thing back up off this one printer. There we go. There we go. Alright, what do we got under here? There we go. So we have some kind of optical tracks here. Obviously when you set the paper width in front of the printer, these optical tracks will tell the printer what size of paper you're putting in so it knows not to go over and score ink on the off side of the paper. So nothing there worth saying for me. This is all going in the trash. piece of glass here. Get that out of the way. That will be going right in the trash can. Trash. What is this? What is this? Two zero eight two zero JRC nine one one three G, and it looks like we have a tiny little, either an LED or an optical sensor there, something of the sort. I will try and check out what that is. That's kind of cool. Okay, try and get to my other actuator down here. Oh, the slug came out of the middle of that one. That's not good. 
So this, again, looks like an electronic solenoid. So voltage would be applied here and be transmitted into mechanical action by this coil uh, and its magnetic field induced by electricity put through it. It will uh, move this slug up and down and actuate things. Obviously this went to a gear of some kind and threw one gear into another which activated something else and initiated this uh, gear train. Very, very cool. That'll be over with the other actuator. I have to break that gear. Get this out of here. There we go. Yep, nothing there worth keeping. I'll throw it with the metal. There's actually quite a bit of metal there. Alright, go ahead and get these zip ties out of the way, get my wire harness out of the way. Got a, some kind of cooling fan here. This is actually a little squirrel cage blower. So this this uh, this wheel, if you can see that this wheel on the side, there's actually a squirrel cage blower right here. If I can if I can spin it and try and see where the what direction the air blows. Kind of hard to tell. That is a little squirrel cage, squirrel cage blower. That's cool. I'm going to try and keep that. This top piece comes apart, but I want to keep all this metal as one as one unit. Apart for me. Not quite. Well, it did on one end. There we go. Okay, now I should be able to jump up here and show you this this little fan. So this is actually a little squirrel cage blower. Up in the rafters there, if you can see that. That's a that's basically like a two gain uh, squirrel cage blower. Whereas this is just a one gain wide blower that obviously just keeps dust out of the machine and keeps everything cool. This might run 20, 24 seven on the machine while it's plugged in and powered just to keep a positive pressure inside the chassis and keep dust out of the entire mechanism. This is kind of cool. I'll keep that. Hopefully there's just two of those and this metal piece comes off. That'll save me some headache. My wire's out of the way. So, There we go. There we go. Alright. This whole piece is metal. There's only a few little plastic bits in here. Break those off. Don't worry about the screws. There we go. So this whole piece can go to the metal man, just like that, even though it's got a couple springs and clips and stuff. Now I did see one more actuator right here. Let's see if I can pop that out real quick. Yes, we can.
There we go. I'm actually going to cut this little piece of wire harness. That's just going to give me some leads to play with when I eventually take these to the desk and play with them. So, uh, where's my slug? There's my slug. Notice how I said the slug came out of the last one? Well, it came out of this one too, and it looks like it's sequent into this wheel here. Yep, there we go. So that just kind of slid into the wheel. That went in there like that, and then this engaged gears, like so. Very useful, very useful, very primitive mechanism, but it takes a lot of power compared to something nowadays that would do the same job. Okay, what else do I have in here? Can't be much more. Looks like I one piece of metal. Maybe one more circuit board. <sighs> Shouldn't have taken that screw out. Oh, right now. All right. Looks like I do have a connector down there. Made a mess of that. Power supply. Ding dong. That's what I was missing. Alright. Uh, there we go. So there is the power button and the power plug assembly. And it is not fused as far as I can tell. So it looks like the fuse is somewhere in this power supply. Oh yeah, there it is. Right there. Okay, I'll actually keep that off to the side. And I can get this big piece of junk unplugged here. Let's go ahead and just take some of these screws out just because. More gears for the trash. <sighs> little limit switch assembly here. Some kind of contact. This slid up that way and made contact underneath here. <sighs> this is trash. If I can get the, just get the wire out of here. Throw the plastic away. There we go. Okay, now back to the power supply here. Still got some circuitry in there that I have to play with. Uh, looks like I might have some screws around here somewhere. There we go, got two keeps. Okay, a little bit of circuit render here. Doesn't look like anything too special. I see another one of these thermistors or whatever it is they are, just like the other one we had before. And single out these boards. There we go. Uh, oh, we got a burnt resistor. Yeah, it looks like we got a fried resistor here. Wow. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take this 
stuff off. I'll put it with the, with the metal pile for now. See if there's anything worth pulling off of there. This whole thing is trash. This whole thing, I think I'm going to give to the metal guy just like that. Get all these uh, ground ties, this wire conduit kind of undone here. There we go. I got one plug for the. Oh, take this off and just keep the wiring with the with the power supply. That'd be nice. With the original connectors and everything. Sweet. There we go. All these little conduit divots where they put the wire into is what makes it difficult. It makes it tempting to just leave it all there. Okay. There we go, got some more wires. Scrap guy. A little more circuitry here, it looks like. It looks like these were actually all spring contacts. So if I show you this, it looks like, as you can see, these spring mechanisms, they basically go to these individual lines. Each one of these spring mechanisms goes up against these lines, and when you press in the spring, it actually shorts out these two lines and you got four or five of them here there we go trash and this circuitry I'll just get the metal gun now the power supply and then that's it we're done Another actuator in there. There's another actuator. Wow. Another one over here too. Look like it. Well, I got one more actuator to take out after the power supply, and then we're done. All right. One screw here. That's it. Little tiny power supply module. Couple caps. Rectifier. Line filter. Very good. This actually might just rectify everything and then go down to the control board. And that's why all those little individual transformers are on the control board. Because all this does is rectify the DC and the control board handles the actual voltage dropping. Very nice. Very cool. Put that in the pile. Slip the inductor core off and keep that in the pile. Okay, we're so close to being done with this thing. A few more screws. down there. It doesn't look like it's going to take much to get to it.
Ah, uh, trash. Okay, more gears coming out. There is the actuator. The final piece of delicious pie. Okay. Let's see. Actuator. Cool. Very nice. Here's the last of the wiring harness. That's full undone. Very nice. Very nice. There's that inductor cord. Go ahead and get that out of there. Nice big inductor cord. Wire for the uh, scrap guy. It has no more electronics on it whatsoever, so it goes right along with the trash pile. And that's it. A couple more pieces of metal here. Last to go in the trash. Try and clean up a little bit. I got a lot of screws to magnetize up here, so I'll worry about that in a moment. Let's see what we got here for parts. We've got one stepper motor. Seems like it might be AC. Stepper motor, very torquey. We've got one big old fat AC motor. Or no, this is a 24 volt DC. This one we knew was DC. DC 24 volts. And uh, with its own controller board and a gearbox. So this will uh, this will bring the gear reduction down immensely. Kind of cool mechanism. The gear box really is trash. It's just the motor that's really working. I think. And it looks like this uh, big. It looks like a line filter rectifier module here. Got taking the line in and taking it DC out. And from there, it goes to the main control board. That's why we were seeing so many of these transformers on here because this board actually takes in the full line voltage rectified and uh, deals with its own switching and, and voltage dropping here at the control board. From there, we got a couple more circuit boards, a lot of LEDs, a lot of buttons, a little the two segment, I'm going to call it the, the two digit seven segment because I'm not even going to use the one, why would you? Uh, this big slider uh, potentiometer here, I would imagine that variable resistor is able to be removed and used for other things. That would be cool to keep for projects. Uh, this little piece of circuitry here, a lot of transistors, a lot of capacitors, a lot of big resistors, thermistors things like that on here so this will be great to go out with the heat gun and pull these pull these things off it looks like that's actually a variable cap these are trim re, trim resistors but i think that's a trim capacitor a lot of zener diodes down there those are particularly cheap that's plenty of parts to get off what else we got we have the 24 volt fan, cooling fan. We have the main uh, positive positive case, uh, basically anti dust fan. Like I said, I think this runs 24 seven while the machine is plugged in, just to keep positive pressure through the case and keep dust out of it. That's just an assumption. From there we have our little uh, power plug assembly with the power button so that'll be useful this actually has inductors built onto it so i could just kind of tap off of these lugs and go power something and have a way to turn it on and off and that 
We've also got our little magnifying glass here that'll be fun to play with. We got actuators for days for old school mechanical actuators, electromechanical actuators, wrapped coils and tape uh, with these plungers that activate when uh, when voltage is applied. Very, very cool. I've never actually held one of these in my hand, though I've seen them on every other tech, uh, tech YouTube channel out there, pretty much. Any retro tech YouTube channel. Uh, you definitely see quite a bit of these. Beautiful. And got a few little things. This one little circuit board, I have no idea what it actually does. It obviously has some kind of optical. Maybe this is like a, a door open, door closed kind of thing. Who knows? Uh, some inductors. These thermistors, I'm pretty sure is what they are. This uh, might be either a Zener diode or a thermistor or a, um, an automatic fuse of some type. Uh, this was the proximity switch. Uh, basically something goes through the middle and activates the normally open section. I don't think I actually have any use for that at all, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the trash. And there you have it. One whole printer scrapped, disassembled. Wow. There's a lot more in the old printers than there are in the new printers. If you can find a printer sub 2002, a lot of stuff worth taking there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.